Welcome to the tutorial for how to play PokeMMO, the Bushido Hunger Games. This is an event that our clan sometimes does on Wednesdays, for fun and for promoting team spirit. The goal is simple, survive until you are the only player left in the battle arena. You start outside Fuchsia City Safari Zone with a single, crappy, low-level Pokemon in your team that you won't miss when you trade it away. Once the game's host has given the start command, you and the other tributes will rush into the Safari Zone as fast as you can and immediately trade with the Overseers waiting inside. They'll give you the Pokemon you'll be using for the game, then in the second trade, you'll give them your level 10 Pidgey or whatever you brought. These are two separate trades because when you only have one Pokemon in your party, the game mechanics don't let you put it up for trade. Be cautioned, all battles are immediate in the Safari Zone. If another person challenges you, you must accept, even if you haven't gotten to trade your crappy Pokemon in yet. This part requires being very quick to trade and then running for your life. Or if you happen to get an awesome first Pokemon, you can try quickly eliminating the competition to please the Overseers. It's important to stay on their good side because you are not allowed to use any items whatsoever during the Hunger Games. However, the Overseers may make a one-time exception if they witness your battle potential. Just like in the story, you'll be watched for most of the game, so make a good impression. Eventually, you'll need to leave the starting area and hunt for capable Pokémon or the tributes who fled. It's better to increase your team, but do not go over 4 Pokemon total in the first round. If an Overseer notices you battling someone with 4 or more Pokemon in your party, he'll attack you. So knowing that you'll only have 4 Pokemon to work with, don't just capture the first 3 wild Pokemon you encounter. Try to hunt for ones that will be able to survive longer than one turn in battle. And you may want to hunt further away from the starting area than I did in the video, to put some distance between yourself and the most aggressive tributes. I couldn't resist searching for Kangaskhan, but I was able to fall back onto Nidorina because I had a Moonstone attached to my rental Pokémon. Make sure to check your starter for items when you have a moment to breathe, they may save you. See, now I have one of the strongest Pokémon in the arena with a Fighting-type attribute. I'm also out of items, but that's okay. Someone may announce a feast later, which means that if I go to their location, I could get something good. The only risk is that other tributes will be attracted to that place as well, so I need to be careful. Uh-oh, I just got challenged. While team building is good, don't take too long hunting because other tributes will be out there hunting for you. Notice that we both have three Pokémon, although the limit is four in the first round and six in the second round. That's how it goes in this game. Tributes will try to eliminate the competition before they get too strong. Only in this case it backfired, because I have a type advantage. And since Alakazam is such a hard hitter, my opponent apparently had no choice but to let his Nidoran take the fall. Like I said, you can max out your team, but if they can't take a hit, they might as well not be there at all. His second Pokémon is his starter, which strangely seems to be lacking an Electric-type move. In these games, your strategy is heavily reliant upon the rentals, since they have moves and types that you otherwise can't get in the Safari Zone. So try not to let them die. If they do die, and you win the battle, you might have a chance to restore them if a nearby Overseer wants to reward your victory. However, someone else may be lying in wait to ambush you once the battle's over, so the Overseer might be busy attacking that guy instead. If you don't get a reward, just keep moving your triumph will not be forgotten in the long run. Oh, and speaking of running and moving, if you run out of Safari Zone steps, just come right back in. Anyway, my final opponent is a Rhyhorn, which is actually a pretty strategic Pokémon to have in these games. It's not too difficult to encounter or capture, and it can take a lot of physical abuse while dealing heavy physical damage. It's a good thing I had Nidoqueen in the party, because Double Kick came in handy. For those afraid of Rhyhorn being too overpowered, I'll give you a hint for countering it. Get to the secret house and request the Overseer there for permission to use Sir. This may earn you a powerful move and flexibility over Licks, but if the Overseer thinks it's still too early in the game for Surf, he might attack you instead. Consider yourself warned. So I've won the fight, and the Overseer says that he's going to reward me with a random item. However, I need to take the time to trade to him in order to get it. I am not allowed to simply use whatever is in my bag, even if it does the same thing. Rewards from Overseers vary. I may be given something random, I might swap out one of my Pokémon for one of his, he might teach my Pokémon a certain move, 
and he may even offer to cripple someone for me. The best reward is when you're allowed to actually request what you want. Be creative, but don't go nuts. Like, you can request immunity from having your starter taken from you, but you can't ask for an auto win or for the Overseer's killer Pokemon. Even with a fully recovered Nidoqueen, I'm unlikely to survive another battle, so I'm going to hide until the competition dwindles or someone calls a feast. While you can do this, bear in mind that Overseers patrol everywhere, and they will attack people who hide. If you're hiding in a house or quick on your bike, you might be able to get away before they can click on you and request a battle. And you really don't want to face them in battle. I don't care if you have a Lapras, Nidoking, Tauros, and Kangaskhan. These guys have mother***ing Dragonites and stuff. Your best hope is that they cripple you and don't outright kill you. Overseers can be your salvation or your destruction, and their aggression increases with time. Fortunately for me, I was still early enough in the game that he let me keep my last Pokemon, although I'm hardly in fighting shape now. If anyone attacks me, even with Nidoqueen, I'll have trouble. Just killed me dead, Artie. Whether you win or get knocked out, there's a second round for the Hunger Games, so hold on to everything in your party. When the first round is over, return to the gate outside and trade your rental Pokemon back to the Overseers. If you have two rentals, which I'll explain later, you get to keep one. If you won the first round, go heal first and then hurry back. When the second round begins, it's exactly like the first round. The only difference is that you can have a full party of Pokemon this time. Whoever wins this round will have a final epic battle with the first round winner. After healing, of course. Now that I've covered what to do when you're still in, I'll address the people who got knocked out. Since you're technically dead until the second round, you would normally sit out, but that's boring. You can sit out if you want, or you can return as a ghost. So that there's no confusion to the fact that you're dead, you must always be in a corner of some sort. That means you're either standing still or hugging the wall as you hurry to the next corner. No hunting Pokemon, no battling people, just corners. If you see someone who's still in, get in your corner and stay there until he's gone. So how is this fun? Here's how. If you see the guy who knocked you out, you are allowed to send a trade request and steal his rental Pokemon. Just like with force battles, he must comply. But if you're not in your corner, he's allowed to reject. Also, if you ask an overseer and he grants you permission, you can call a feast. This means that if someone runs to your location, you can grant them a favor, such as healing one of their Pokemon or offering an evolution stone. Just bear in mind that if you decide to do this, it's your own resources you're using. Well anyway, that's about what you can expect from the Bushido Hunger Games. Tell everyone you know, this is a lot more fun in greater numbers, and there's always an awesome prize for the winner. Take care, and may the odds be ever in your favor.